Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine. <laughs> what's it doing here? Uh, anyway, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, good to see everybody. Uh, the biggest news of all, of course, is that the striking actors in Hollywood finally agreed to a deal. Uh, so, you know, we're, it took a while, but, uh, you know, Lily has agreed to end the strike with them. She has some very specific demands, uh, including a new dressing room, spa days, wardrobe allowance. She has some issue with cats, but who knows? You know, it's very difficult. The other big news, of course, is AstraZeneca, the maker of flu mist, is now going to try and get it approved for at home, so that next year, maybe during the flu season, you can just get it at your drugstore and do it at home. Don't need to go to your doc doctor's office. Well, I know each of you every day wake up sometimes wondering why are we doing it all. So. I saw this advertisement. It is unbelievable. You, you got to wonder why, you know, sometimes I'm even talking to people. This says, secure your well-being, COVID-19 protection made easy. There's a picture of, I don't know what that's supposed to be, a father, son, or whatever. who knows. But you can experience peace of mind with our proven, solu proven solution, the power to prevent COVID now in your hands. Order your ivermectin capsules today. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> I mean, really, it's, it's hard to believe that people actually do this. And may, they'll, I'm sure they'll make a ton of money off it. So interesting things going on in the world of respiratory viruses. Uh, you know, it's going up in terms of emergency visits, but you can see COVID's going down is the cause, but RSV and flu are going up. If you look at um, percentage of emergency uh, visits that are due to COVID, they're going down, but it's sort of plateaued. And frankly, I, I don't know about you, but I got... I know three or four people who currently have COVID. We had a board of trustees meeting and several people missed it because they were at home because of COVID. Uh, new hospital admissions have sort of been going down. As you can see, it's mostly in those who are over the age of 65, but again, going down, which is all good news. Probably reflects the fact that people over 65 get vaccinated and don't take ivermectin. What are you gonna do? Uh, wastewater data is interesting. It's beginning to float upwards. This is the biobot data. We, we talked about this. <laughs> they will no longer be providing the data after, I think, next uh, uh, July. And if you look at the percentage of wastewater sites that are reporting increases, it's the same as last week, 43%. Interesting enough, you know, just like our personal experience, I have several friends who've got, come down with COVID in Houston. Virus load is going up in Houston wastewater. You can see multiple sites now where it's up to 144% of what it was in 2020, last week was 122, and it was about 80% uh, the week before. So you can see a steady rise in the amount of virus in our region. And not surprisingly, people are getting showing up with cases. Uh, the, I guess the good news is the evolution of the virus isn't really changed much. HV1 remains the dominant strain, and between H HV1 and EG5, it's about 50%. But again, these are minor mutations, so it's not like a big recombinant event. So again, the tests work, the vaccines work. So if you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated, get your updated vaccine. And as you can see, again, these are all very closely related. These are HV1 uh, and EG5 are all related, it came from XBB. So it's, it's an, sort of one substitution in the spike protein after another. That's normal evolution. Doesn't change it that much that would cause a giant uh, outbreak. A Couple of interesting papers. Uh, this one is actually uh, very, very good from Ontario, Canada. It was published in uh, JAMA Pediatrics. 142,000 live births in Ontario were examined. 60% of the mothers received uh, COVID-19 vaccine during pregnancy. And what they looked was is the incidence of severe neonatal morbidity uh, in intensive care unit admissions up to six months. So what they found was that if you got vaccinated, if you were pregnant, got vaccinated during pregnancy, you're at a much lower risk of severe neonatal morbidity, neonatal death, neonatal intensive care units, uh, and there was no increase in neonatal readmission compared to those that did not get vaccinated, and the protection lasted for six months. So uh, again, if you're pregnant, get vaccinated. Be sure you're updated with your vaccines. It protects you and your baby. Uh, Unfortunately, if you look at the you know, vaccination up to date, who's up to date with vaccines, it's a very spotty, Northeast much more. If you look in our region, Texas is lagging behind Louisiana. It's unfortunate. I'm not sure why we have people who don't want to get vaccinated, but we do. Uh, also, interesting study that came out in JAMA Pediatrics around how long kids who get infected shed virus. So this is interesting. They looked at 76 uh, participants in, in uh, Los Angeles County 
about half were vaccinated, half were not. And what they found was that if kids got infected, whether they were vaccinated or not, you know, remember this vaccine doesn't prevent infection, it prevents serious outcomes. Uh, but if they got infected, it was about the same. The, the median duration was about uh, five days. Uh, the, but interestingly enough, uh, the kids shed virus for three to five days and even up to 10 days. And that is a good uh, reason why the, the, the recommendation still holds. If you're, in, if you're infected, stay home for about five days. Uh, and that's, that's good policy because people are shedding virus. Kids shed virus for that long. There's also two really interesting studies looking at the effect of, of gut microbiome on long COVID. And what they, two papers showed that uh, if you have long COVID and you, you've had in a, can, a Canada infection in your gut, uh, that it's very, uh, it shows that more likely to have long COVID. So it's a, a good example where the fungi in your gut might be per, uh, responsible for uh, the long COVID syndrome in some cases. And then there, we talked about a test for long COVID. Uh, there is uh, a, a series of proteins in the, in the body that, that, are, that respond to inflammation. They're called complement. Uh, they're very important for the killing of uh, foreign cells and bacteria and viruses. And there's four particular parts of the cascade, of the complement cascade you can measure that seem to be consistent with long COVID. So that's a good diagnostic test, which may be emerging for long COVID. It also gives you some idea of what might cause it, chronic inflammation, that kind of thing. So very interesting studies. Uh, as, for, uh, as we can see, flu is now right in the middle of the season. This is kind of when, at the, when flu begins to peak. This is a really interesting graph. It looks at the amount of flu that was in the middle of the COVID pandemic, and you can see there was almost no flu. We were all wearing, we were all wearing masks and uh, social distancing. But before the pandemic, this is the time you can see the peak of flu season, and this is this year. So we're tracking just like every other flu season prior to the pandemic, and we're in the middle of what's now the rising incidence of flu. You can see that the CDC has reported of influenza A here in yellow, influenza B in green. And the good news is that if you look at, if you look at the types of, of uh, flu, influenza uh, H1N1 for influenza A is the predominant strain, H3N2 slightly there, and the B, influenza B is mostly Victoria. All of these are in the vaccine. So another reason why a uh, good idea to get vaccinated. And of course, where's the hotbed of flu right now? <clears throat> it's Florida. Everything bad happens in Florida. I don't know why people ever live there. Anyway, same thing for, for RSV. RSV uh, is going up. If you, you saw in the, in the pandemic, it was not present, but in the previous to the pandemic, this was the season for RSV. And you can see we're now beginning to see more and more RSV cases. And in fact, uh, there was a big uh, outbreak of RSV in, in North Tex Texas hospitals. It was reported uh, just recently. So uh, in Dallas, there's a big outbreak of uh, RSV in kids. So I want to end today with a bunch of shout outs. First of all, uh, congratulations to Dr. Kyle Egan, the Assistant Professor of Molecular and Cell Biology in the Center for Precision Environmental Health. He is one of three scientists selected by the Sontag Foundation for a Distinguished Science Scientific Award. His research is really interesting. It looks at three-dimensional structure of chromosomes and how it impacts gene regulation and its, its uh, relationship to the development of brain cancer. Uh, it's, it, it, Sontag Foundation is one of the largest funders for brain cancer, so a great award for him. Also, I want to con congratulate Dr. Sean Groth, Associate Professor in, Bay in Baylor's David J. Sugarbaker Division of Thoracic Surge Surgery. He recently performed his 100th robot-assisted uh, minimally invasive esoph esophagectomy. This is really transforming the way uh, esophagectomies are performed on less invasive and, and uh, better outcomes, so congratulations to him. And finally, the Hess toy truck is back again. This is the eighth year partnership with the Hess uh, company. Uh, we create the STEM curriculum. Uh, our, our Baylor Center for Educational Outreach uh, is, it does, creates an eight lesson program to teach uh, STEM education for kids. Hess provides the trucks, we provide the curriculum, so it's a great partnership together. So anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I can't wait to see you next week. Genuine excitement over the news that the Screen Actors Guild strike is over. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god! The strike, the longest in the Guild's history, was resolved late yesterday. <laughs> the strike is over! And today, performers are getting ready to go back to work.
Lily, Bob on line one, Bob on line one. Lily, I've considered your request to ban all cats from Texas. I've taken a look at uh, authority, precedent, and in my legal opinion, it would violate the Texas Catstitution. I would strongly encourage you to get along. Lily? 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 Guys, right on the set! Camera speed. Sound production, take one. Lights, camera, action!